Good afternoon YouTube, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, it's um, a species specific orchid video today. I have got a Brassa orchid, a Brassa datacosa, Coos Bay it's called. And it is beautiful and out in bloom and look at how gorgeous this thing is. I think this is the best it has ever looked. It is just amazing. And I just wanted to give some care and culture tips on it, share what it's planted in, share a, a bulb mishap that I had with it, um, kind of interesting. And yeah, it's it's done really good. I repotted this guy last year, so in March 2016. We might have even repotted this guy together, I can't remember. Or we, rep we repotted it together two years ago. But um, I know with this, this plant has been in videos before. We actually did a division of this plant. I think we split it on video. And um, I do have the two of them still. The other one's not in bloom at this point, but... Man, these things smell amazing. So first off, let's give you a close-up of what this looks like. This is a pretty impressive bloom spike here. It has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 flowers on it. And it's probably... I don't stake anything. I like brass is not staked anyways. If this was straight up, it would look different. I don't know. Look, I, I like them like not staked. But it doesn't stand up anymore in the pot. As soon as I brought it out from the shelf, I, I have to like support it with stuff now. Otherwise, it just kind of falls over. The last bud is still yet to open, so it's like looking at its best. We're having just like that one last one, like not quite open. It means none of them have um, have started to look old yet. The the flowers themselves are really big. You can see from this one like these little tendrils that come down. When I put my hand up like that, it's way bigger than my hand so I would say they're probably I measured them before they're 12 to 14 inch blooms on these guys on this one and yeah the smell is just amazing you can smell it in the whole greenhouse and about 10 minutes ago it was raining we're definitely got like April showers still but now the sun's out as soon as I start to film it gets really bright now and it's gonna get hot I unplug the um the fogger behind me so it won't go off and distract us but um yeah so let's get started on this it grows on the warm side it used to grow when I had no warm side, it grew on the cool side and used to get nights down to like 55 Fahrenheit or 14, 13 Celsius. Now it gets nights down to 16 to 18, 19 Celsius um, or like 65 to 68 Fahrenheit. So a good 10 or 12 degrees warmer in the nights. It's on the south wall. It's tucked in a little bit. My south wall's pretty packed, so it's behind a couple plants. The roots are amazing on it, so it's been facing this way. And I've noticed this with all my plants now. Um, with the increased humidity in here, because I have two hydrofoggers now, and with the, um, the first year on the warm side, I didn't have any humidity over on that side, so the heat was really drying, and all the humidity was on, on my side, on the cool side. So now I have humidity on both sides. Um, but all the roots grow towards the shade. They grow away from the sun. Makes sense, right? They don't want to dry out. So all the roots come out this way. Look at this root here. This one's coming up the bulb. I don't know if we're going to see that. It's like coming up. And let's get you out of the way. We'll prop you over the camera. And that root's like going right up the back bulb and like out. So really strong grower. Um, I have it in my normal orchid mix of bark, perlite, and sphagnum moss with a top dressing of sphagnum. I think if I was to do it again, I, I've been using a lot more of the sphagnum moss in my mixes. It's just lower maintenance for me. So I um, would probably add a little bit more moss to this. I make sure my plants are pretty much dry before I rewater them. So, you know, this one, it's been a few days and it's only been a few days and it's pretty much needing rewatering, which is a little bit high maintenance for me, especially this time of year. Oh, if you don't have a Brassa, you need to get one purely for the smell. So this one again was Brassa daticosa. But they all seem to have this like, it's like a lemony, orangey, citrusy, I don't know what it is. I can't describe it. But anyway, so it's obviously bloomed before. Here's some old spikes on it. But what I wanted to show you as well is look at this. I thought I was going to lose it. Shortly after I replanted it, repotted it, might have even been before. This is old. I'm, I'm not concerned about it anymore. But look at this. The bulb got some black rot on it. And I panicked for a bit. I thought about removing the bulb. Like, look at it. It's like terrible. But what did I do? I um, 
I removed as much of the mushy tissue as I could. I dabbed it with a paper towel to dry it as much as I could because it was wet, it, like the rot was wet. And then I took about, gosh, I can use measures of pinches or teaspoons. I took a teaspoon of cinnamon, pure ground cinnamon, and mashed it into the moist, wet bacteria. And it stopped the rot. Um, it, I thought this plant was a goner for sure. I've never seen a bulb like stop rotting like this. Like this bulb is old now. It's grown two new bulbs since then, or one new bulb since then anyways. Um, Cause this bulb was already here, I think that I'm tapping. But yeah, so this was kind of like one of those semi old back bulbs. It had flowered and it was growing a new one. And then I'm like, oh my God, it's starting to rot. And I didn't know why. It was shortly after transplanting it. It would have been last year at some point. So maybe that has something to do with it. I, I don't have any other ones to show you. Like, I don't know why I did it. Um, but anyways, yeah, I, uh, I dried it as much as I could. I avoided spraying this bulb with water for like the last year. It's never, um, it's never gotten wet here. I'm finally comfortable that it's like not going to get any worse and is the, the rot is done. The rot happened really quickly. Here, I'll get, try to get you a close up of it again. It happened really quickly. I just like noticed it and like it was there and the bulb was like a third gone. But yeah, cinnamon. I use cinnamon. I keep it in the greenhouse for when I'm making small cuts, like when I cut a, a spike off, then I will put a bit of cinnamon on the end because it is it has antibacterial properties. It has antifungus properties. But um, to actually stop the black rot like it did was just amazing. And I have no idea what black rot or brown rot it actually was. Um, I can't even get the um, get it in focus too much. Let's see here, just to show you. Still some black around the edges, but that black is dried and papery now. And this is just kind of woody. Yeah. So yeah, it was just like this cast of cinnamon and the cinnamon just stayed on there and got all crusty. And I bet you there's still some cinnamon on that, even though it's like a year later, probably not doing much good anymore, but I consider it a save. It's completely fine. And um, another, I would say by the end of summer this year, these leaves are going to be gone and this will be an official back bulb anyways. But yeah, other than that, this guy, he likes the warm temperatures. I do let him get dry. This winter, I've let let him get quite dry. I let him dry before I rewater him. Um, I think that's why some of the roots are searching for humidity and stuff like that. Um, I don't mind him getting some full sun. As I say, he's on the south wall. and He's about a foot from the, the actual polycarbonate itself. He's not like pushed up against it or anything. But I wouldn't be scared to do that. These guys do like cattleya type light. Um, you can give him pretty much as much as you want. Well, it's humid as well. You know, I wouldn't want to put him on a, a south window in the middle of summer in my house where it's dry. I think he'd get cooked, but um, yeah. So lots of light and lots of flowers. And you know what? I didn't even fertilize this guy this year. He hasn't been fertilized since he's been in this pot. And so I was just worried about him recovering from this back bulb. I wasn't even like worried about him having a spike or anything. But yeah, that's my Brassadaticosa. That's my story behind his back bulb and some awesome roots. I'm really a big fan of roots. The old saying goes, healthy roots, healthy leaves, healthy flowers. So I think that's holding true here because we definitely bring it back up again. You can see the roots through the, um, the clear pot. But anyways, I hope you liked this video. And if you want to see more videos like this, make sure you subscribe to my channel. As always, thanks for watching.